Are you out there where the rainy days begin to feel rather sad? Hey internet, welcome back to another devlog. Uh, we're looking at Infinite Game today. Uh, last one with Finite Vault. I'm gonna just recap that. Boom, ba boom, boom. Infinitegame.marcobacon.com. You can come and try this out on your own if you were to so choose. Uh, if you didn't watch the last level, you can go ahead and watch it, but I got this deployed. It's kind of interesting. I got it up on a digital ocean droplet, uh, gave up on the home server idea. I'll come back to it, but I was having issues with SSL certificates. Google is not working, never implemented as I went over the devlog. We signed with Proton. It does the whole OAuth thing, and here we are. There are a couple things are broken. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but it is out there if you wanna give it a shot. But this is devlog number one for Infinite Game. And and I wanted to talk about Infinite Game, what I'm building and what I've done so far. So at the end of the day, Infinite Game is uh, a web app, an app, a product, whatever you want to call it, to help gamify life. For me, or I, I feel a dependency on extrinsically motivating things. And I need a video for this week. So here we are. Uh, if you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm a software engineer, currently unemployed, uh, you know, still. Uh, going through some more final rounds as we speak. We'll see how it goes. Optimism is low, but the best I can do is keep going. I have also uh, been doing things like system design. Uh, as we can see here, this has been a great resource, great website, just really going, going deep on things, teaching myself more about what I don't know. I don't know. Doing some sample uh, system design problems. So if you go to Excala Draw, I believe this was some program they were using on that website and it's a whiteboarding tool that was fun and then i kind of was like what if i did a system design for like building the thing that i want to build i deployed finite vault i said let me just get this off my chest i still have our beautiful trello board uh you know here it is it's hasn't really changed much but long story short finite vault was done and deployed and i made some final decisions here's an overview of what the product is and i'm just doing it in obsidian so there, there's four main features main quest is kind of a goals oriented approach at life right i want to lose weight something i did for myself which is what what this derives from is this thing on my board that says main quest you are a game developer objective make and publish video games i can actually bring you with me i think it's a fun way to to value or to reframe your goals in life i'm back one of the books that really reframed the way i've been thinking recently is infinite uh, finite and infinite games by james curse give it a read if you so choose finite game uh is something with very clear definitions and multiple people play and all agree to play. Soccer, finite game. There's a very clear win condition. Someone wins and someone loses. An infinite game is not as clear. The rules constantly change. Life is one big infinite game. This project of infinite game is an infinite game. I don't want to get too much into the philosophy, but it's it's all based around gamifying life and in, in the way that it is an infinite game. A main quest is, is not a goal that you just hit. It can change along the way. That's the most ex self-explanatory feature, I think, is a main quest. The second feature is Finite Vault. We've all seen what Finite Vault is. It's a very simple system. I've got most of the logic sorted out. I will use maybe 5% of the code. You have a balance that kind of increments every day. Thirdly, it's something called Daily Battles. Uh, this is heavily inspired by an app I used to use, but pretty much this is a, a battle is focused around a habit. The, the things that were most useful to me is uh, saying I did something or I didn't do the thing and instead did something else. So for example, if I'm like standing on the train, where's my phone? Where are you? I'm so sorry. Well, anyway, <laughs> if I'm waiting for the train, I open my phone, I look at Twitter, for example. That's a minus one for this battle. I've lost the battle. I've lost the social media. But instead, if I pull out Bukowski from my backpack that I think is a more productive use of my time than Twitter, I'll go ahead and give myself a plus one. And these are the first feature that we're starting out with. I'll get into what I've implemented so far in just a minute. And then we have trials and challenges. This one is a bit more unique. I think it's a bit harder to have conceptualized. Sometimes I make to-do lists, right? Do three algo problems very measurable, very easy to complete. Log all your calories for the day. That's done once dinner hits, right? You have your last meal, you've done logging calories, you check that off. Don't eat chocolate. That's a difficult one because it's only completed at 11.59, 59 p.m. of that day or midnight the next day, whatever you really kind of, however you choose to define it. And so the way I'm looking at this and I, a few friends kind of helped me try and get a good word for this. The idea is that there's an achievement uh, that you could obtain. And that achievement might be solve three algorithms problem today. And that's zero or one. If you complete one or two algorithms problems, that is that zero percent. You have not completed that goal for the day. But the challenge for the day is to not eat chocolate. Not eating chocolate is something that is completed, but you, you, you remove that completion flag if you end up eating chocolate. Very hard to explain. I don't think I, I, I fully have quite labeled that myself, but these are distinctions from just to do tasks. So yeah, those are the four main features of Infinite Game. Name pending, I don't really know if I can call it that. I'm unemployed. Cool. I'm working on this project, full stack app. I'm doing these system design questions, right? Design Dropbox, whatever. The, the context of these interviews is, is usually pretty standard. There's a way to go about it. There's a framework of build the high level overview, go into this, this, and this. Different websites, Algo Expert, uh, Try Exponent, uh, Hello Interview, right? All these 
these websites that I've been using, I can learn so much about designing a system. If I'm going for mid-level positions, I want to be designing systems. And so where does that lie? Where does that usefulness come in for my job? So I sat down and I went, okay, well, let me design a system for infinite game. I don't want to worry about scale. I think it's way too early in the, in the game <laughs> for that, for me, especially. And the idea here is to go over the progress today. And I just wanted to talk about A, the framework of infinite game. These things are going to change most likely. Uh, and B, uh, B, B, I just wanted to say uh, the context of what brought me here, right? Why have I done what I've done? And just because life took me here. So in the context of systems, as I come back over here, uh, in my Obsidian thing here, uh, we have system design diagrams in Excalibur. You can take a look at it if you want, but pretty much I was like, hey, what are the functional requirements of, of daily battles? If you're interviewing, I'd recommend doing this. This kind of, A, was a bit more fun and gave it a very practical use case for what I've just been learning. A lot of this I, I know is just kind of knowledge you know. You don't usually do it in this format, I think. At least in my last job, we would do whole TDDs with it was just a lot more formal language, but this was nice and simple. Functional requirements requirements or what do I want the user to do? I want you to click on a habit plus one minus one or make a new habit. Very simple. Non-functional requirements is like, well, I want you to do that. And when you hit plus one, I want that plus one to always update when you go back and forth. In a system design interview, uh, I hope that this high level is where I might start. I'm never gonna go and print all of these these actions. That's that's a bit overkill. Interviews are gonna be like, hey, how can you scale this to a thousand users, right? But pretty much for the sake of this, all I'm doing here is, hey, there's a client, we'll have some sort of API gateway and here's the habit service. I don't know if I'll do microservices or monorepo. I haven't gotten that far, but that'll happen when I just get down to it. And then here are all the actions and here's what they do when they hit the database at a very high level. And this was kind of fun. Diddly battle, sorry, is definitely gonna be the main uh, element. I'm just doing it mobile first. I think it's not about losing the battle. I have a little quote here and I kind of want to work on that, but win or lose, it's not about the battle, it's about the war. If I open Twitter and I take the minus one, that's okay. It, in this specific example, losing a battle sometimes is okay. That's kind of the, the thing I wanted to instill that the previous way I did this was kind of lacking. This is my little wireframe here for daily battles. Yeah. On my door or do you want the background. Mm, that doesn't that doesn't lead any anxiety at all. Daily battles, mobile, uh, some sticky notes. This is pretty simple. You hit plus one, minus one. If you if you do the thing or you don't do the thing. I was experimenting with this idea about negative positive habits, but uh, I think that'll come with implementation. Go ahead and zoom out here. I also just want to talk about when you open the app. Daily battles are the first thing because I think a it's on a conceptual level the, the simplest thing. It doesn't require users to go in and define their own quests because I haven't defined how main quests are actually going to work yet. Very simple wireframes. I'm trying to avoid complexity. I made some wireframes just now because a, a friend of mine brought up a really good point. He was like, wait, I, I can't use this without logging in when I when I sent a link to Finite Vault. And I was like, that is something I want to support, but I don't really know how. And then I was on a walk yesterday and this thing just popped into my head. I'm not a designer. We've been over this, but pretty much let's create a habit to get started. You can log into your existing account, but otherwise using just, you know, on a browser, local storage, for example, to store someone's habits is great. I don't know. I think phones depends on the OS and I'm not a mobile developer. Hopefully I get to change that. The idea is just you kind of make your habit. These are all text boxes that you can kind of kind of fill in of, of your own stuff. I like this handwritten font. It's a uh, Sagoi print, Sago print, whatever you want to say. This idea of positive negative habits, I won't go into. That can come later. I just, I think I'm going to end up scrapping it and you're finished. And this is a way to get a user using your product right away. I think a nice quick and easy onboarding is an important thing. Pa, 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 pa. In preparation for interviews, uh, one of the jobs had like, hey, experience with Python web frameworks. And this, doing this came in clutch because on Three interviews now i've had web framework related questions uh finite vault one of them one of them was in go so i kind of knew how to write and read response and requests in go's generic framework oh there's a i'm kind of speed running this aren't i i went with three python frameworks we first went with flask because this is the one i used uh, at work so habits flask it's effectively a very simple version of daily battles you, you get all the habits of a user on the right for those of you who are curious we just have this like in memory database so i just have two habits in here and the habits increment to increment your id as if it was like a Postgres table for, or at least for users, Postgres. And this was just to get me up and running with these frameworks very specifically. Uh, and this was nice. I was like, okay, cool. Up, up and running, quick and up and running. I plan on doing this in Go, but this was fun anyway. Django uh, took a lot, like there's a lot more <laughs> setup here happening. And it was a bit more of a pain in my opinion, because I'm one who does not like verbose code. So habits Django and habits are all Django files. So here's the, the apps views, I think is where the logic is. Yeah. Having a response object was fine. And then I hit fast, uh, 
HTTP, fast API. I keep calling it fast HTTP because it's going. Sorry, I'm speaking so fast. Hope you don't mind. Same exact thing. We have an app.get all habits. Same exact logic with the response object instead because Flask had just did a bit of that for you. Super quick, nice and easy to get it up and running. And then just for sake of uh, finishing this out. Cool. Uh, that should load in a second. Yep, there we go. Application started. Uh, get all habits sent. Gets the user habits zero. Uh, we see them down here. We go ahead and hit, hit the post request with that new habit. This returns the added habit completely. Send this again. Oh my God, another habit's been added. What a shocker. I know, I know. That was fun to get up and running and I kind of hit this. I needed a video this week and I was like, oh, this would be kind of fun to maybe talk about. So a little bit devlog, a little bit uh, what I've been doing for job interviews. That's Infinite Game in its current state, a good old progress report and just making these updates as I go. Uh, system design diagrams are fun. And I think that high level is enough for me to get started because having that API spec makes it so much easier to get started. Hopefully I'll jump into Go at some point, but whatever is best for job interviews does take precedence. If I do have to apply for a place and they want me to know Nest.js, in the next video, you'll see me with the same backend in a different language and potentially framework. Thanks so much for watching. That's it. Yeah, have a good one. And I, I hope you'll, you'll join me for, for any future devlogs that come out. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.